What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace your gauge cluster lights. As you can see in my case, well, let me turn this off. I already have LEDs in there. I'll show you a picture of what it looked like before I put these LEDs in. But obviously the middle one is burnt. It actually has three bulbs, one on the left, one in the middle, one on the right. So essentially in this video, we're going to go from this to this. Let's get started. All right, so to do this repair, super simple. You need three 194 bulbs and a Phillips head screwdriver. First, you wanna take off any accessories that you might have. Um, this is just a coolant temp sensor for me. And next, you're gonna see two holes right here. Those are two Phillips heads, and we're gonna have to take those out in order to remove this trim piece around the gauge cluster. If you have a stubby screwdriver, that would be more helpful, but a regular screwdriver also works. Now comes the part where you're gonna to wanna to pull this off from the top first. You can use a little uh, trim tool or a flathead screwdriver, just be very careful, or a Phillips head, well, whatever you have. So pull this out from the top first, and then as you pull it out from the top, you're gonna to have to pull straight out from the bottom and unclip it. There we go, that's one, ah, that's two. The clips are very tough. Just be careful not to break the, uh, the trim piece. And now you want to just find a way to take this out of here. The steering wheel does not move up and down. It's not a not an adjustable one. So just pull the bottom up first and then it's gonna be tight, but squeeze it out to the side. As you can see, one of the clips stayed in here. So just squeeze it and remove it and reattach it to the trim piece for uh, reinstalling. Now there are four Phillips head screws that are holding this gauge cluster in. These two black ones at the top and same for the bottom. You can't see them very well, but neither can I. So uh, just feel for it. And if you have to move the wiper and turn signal levers out of the way, obviously do so. It's best to do it with the car off. Otherwise your wipers and blinkers will start going crazy, but sometimes you can't really get that screw out. If you have a magnet or a magnetic screwdriver, that would uh, be perfect. Or you can just leave it in there and then when you pull the gauge cluster out, just be careful about it. Now, don't confuse these screws with these right here because these are actually holding this plastic cover on top of the gauge cluster on. So if you remove those, it's not really gonna do anything other than unbolt this plastic cover, which is not what you want. You want this to be sealed up, otherwise dust and moisture can get in there and that's not good. All right, now gently pull it out from the bottom. Remove these two screws that are still in there. Put them away safely. Now they're all the same. These two up here and those four are all the same. So you don't have to worry about those. Gently take the right side of it out first. Hopefully you can see in there, but there are two, three connectors actually. That's one right there. And then there are two on the other side, a blue one and a white one. So two white and one blue. There's a push tab on the top of them that you have to push down on. Take those three out and then the whole gauge cluster should slide out. That is the, that's the tab that you have to press down on, on all three. Okay, once you've unbolted them, take it out towards the passenger side of the car. And here is your gauge cluster. Be very careful with this wiring board in the back. It's uh, It's very thin plastic with copper strands going through it so make sure you don't rip it or scratch it or tear it in, in any way all right so the bulbs that you're interested in are these dark brown ones so three of them you don't want to replace this one with an led because this is actually the bulb that indicates your uh, low fuel i did replace this with an led one time and it turns out that it will just stay on all the time I'm not sure if it sends a low current through it enough to power the LED and it'll only work with an incandescent bulb because as you can see, it's it's a regular uh, incandescent bulb. Either way, I had to swap it back because it would always stay on. So um, that didn't really work out that great. Anyway, so these are the bulbs that you need to remove. Gently remove, as you can see, I already have LEDs in them. Gently twist them counterclockwise three of these. This is the one that does not work for me. Uh, this one still works. So does this one, but I'm just going to swap them all because I have new ones. And uh, these I just bought very cheap LEDs off of eBay. Uh, they work decently, but they do burn out a lot. So I bought some better quality ones 
right here. And these are also a little bit brighter, which is perfect. All right, so remove the old bulb from its socket and get ready to put the new one in. Now keep in mind, these LEDs are sensitive to polarity, which means the positive and negative are only able to circulate one direction. Let's say it works this way, and then you flip it over and plug it in, it's not gonna work. So you have to plug it in and test it before you uh, fully install everything. There's no way of knowing which way it's supposed to go in. So I'm just gonna put it in this way, hope it works, and I'm gonna plug in the gauge cluster before I mount it and see if they all light up. If they don't, I'm gonna take the bulb out, flip it, and uh, try it again. So for me, uh, I had to actually take these little connectors that are on there and flip them sideways a little bit so that I can make a good connection. As you can see, the connector is right on the side because the original bulb had uh, side connectors. Either way, now it's connected, so just put them all back in. Clip them in place. And now let's go test it. So what you want to do is turn your uh, lights on, your parking lights or headlights, whatever you want. And the connector that gives the lights power is this white one all the way to the left. So just plug that one in. It's also the longest one, which is very convenient. Uh, so once you plug that in, you can test the lights for power and make sure you have them connected in properly. Okay, so turn your parking lights on, slide in the gauge cluster, and I can't really show you because it's hard for me to see, but basically just connect that connector all the way to the left. It looks like I got them all right from the uh, first try. If one of them does not light up, so let's say this one didn't light up here, just take it and flip it 180 degrees. I'm not gonna do it because then it's gonna shut off, but just take it and connect it the other way around and it should work fine. If it still doesn't connect, then I would take this out, remove the bulb from here. I'm gonna do it with one of the old bulbs so I don't have to mess with the new bulb. Basically, you wanna take the connectors and put them sideways like that and then touch it to the terminal and make sure it actually lights up. That way you know if it's a bulb issue or a connection issue. So see if you flip it around. Nothing happens, flip it the right way, boom, lights up. That's how you would test for power and make sure that you actually have power and it's just a bad connection. Now you should have LED lights here. Uh, don't forget to connect the rest of the connectors, which can be tricky, but it is doable. They will pretty much fall into place once you have this close in there because they've been connected for so long that the wires are molded to the shape that they need to be in. Let's put this back and now I'll try and Press it in here. Make sure you're not pinching any wires. There are some wires back there. Once it's lined up, double check it, make sure all the bulbs still work and they do. They're nice and bright, I like that. So let's put the uh, screws in and then the trim piece back. All right, so let's get these four screws back in. I'm gonna start with the top because they're easier to access. Make those snug, and once the top are started, you know that the gauge cluster can't move around, so sneak these two bottom ones back in. All right, and make those snug. Now be careful not to over tighten them because you are screwing into plastic, so it's easy to strip the threads. Now to reinstall this trim piece to the opposite that you did to remove it, so come in from the passenger side. It's going to have to squeeze a little bit, but just uh, make sure it doesn't squeeze too much. There we go. Um, make sure you have those clips in there. Line those up from the bottom first and press them in. There we go. Sometimes they need a little extra convincing. All right, line up the top and put those two screws in. Make those snug. And there you have it. You've successfully replaced your gauge cluster lights with LEDs. Now the beauty of this is not only will you get better lighting, but you can also customize the color of it. So for example, in my wife's Camry wagon, I was able to make them purple because that's her favorite color. So I was like, hey, you want purple dash lights? She was like, yeah. So I put in purple. What I used here is more of like a cold white, light blue type of light. But you can also get warm white light like I have on my dome light or uh, really any other color that you want. Blue, red, green, whatever you want. So uh, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, if you have any other video suggestions, let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.